I was just going to go for it, Michelle. <laughs> We were chatting for sure. Good community of practice. That's great. <laughs> okay, Katie and Kristen, you're on. You're introducing, correct? I can do it right now. Yeah. Perfect. All right. I'm so, um, next up, we have Liz Arbuckle, who's going to tell us a little bit more of some of the stuff she was trying to talk to us about before. Um, Liz is the Northern Region Outreach Coordinator with the Wisconsin Historical Society Office of Programs and Outreach. So Liz, take it away. Hello. Can you hear me okay? Sure can. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you for having me today. Um, we can just go right to the next slide. So who are we at the uh, Local History Outreach Program for the Wisconsin State Historical Society? These are some of the things we do or the things that fall under our area is outreach services and partnerships with local history, heritage and cultural groups, local history affiliate program, the Historical Markers Program. We also oversee the Speakers Bureau, traveling exhibits, and we do a lot of webinars, programs, and conferences. Oh, and more. And I'm going to detail these things as we go down the slides. Okay, next slide, please. So that's me at the top. Uh, these are your regional staff contacts, and I oversee or help out, I guess. I'm the coordinator for the Orange counties in northern Wisconsin and everyone here knows Janet and she's got kind of the olive green counties and then Kristen has the blue counties and we of course all work together uh, collaboratively a lot of times but when you have air particular questions in your region you can contact one of us and um, we will gladly help you out so next question or sorry next slide <laughs> And these are some of our colleagues. So Tanika is the Multicultural Outreach Coordinator. Uh, she does a lot of Heritage Month activities. We're looking at doing something fun for, for Juneteenth because of course that was a very big deal that it became a federal holiday this year uh, quite, quite abruptly, like the day before. So uh, uh, now we're all kind of trying to get things ready for something for next year. So Tanika is working hard on that along with many other projects. My colleague Fitzy is the Historical Markers Program Coordinator. So if you've got anything to do with markers, you've probably talked to Fitzy. We do have a marker, speaking of our region here, that's going to be dedicated tomorrow over in Manaqua. The giant penny is getting a historical marker. So Fitzy and I should both be there. And we're excited because this is our first, uh, both of our first time seeing a historical marker dedication. So that's neat. And probably everyone knows Amy Norlin, our outreach services coordinator. She um, is a jack of all trades. She does the annual reporting, the communications, the newsletter, how to become an affiliate. She answers a million questions a day and she's a wonderful resource. So, um, and all of us are here to help you if you need any help. Okay, next slide, please. So let's talk a little bit more about the affiliate program. Our program supports a network of 426 affiliated organizations. All nonprofit community history and cultural organizations, including publicly funded museums and tribal museums can apply for affiliation. So what uh, is some of the driving factors or what are some of the benefits to become an affiliate organization? Well, one of them is you can apply for mini grants and we'll cover that in a minute to support collections care. Uh, have your endowment funds managed by the Wisconsin Historical Foundation. You can participate in the Wisconsin Council for Local History. Receive uh, the Historical Society publications, newsletters, emails. Receive discounts from Gaylord Archive and so much more, not to mention us. I just mentioned us, so I won't mention it again, but you have access to us those friendly faces you saw on the other slides. Next slide, please. The mini grant program. So each spring, affiliates can apply for grants for up to $700 for projects and activities to support your collections care and management. 
if you have any one of these projects on, on the horizon or kind of in the hopper, plan now to apply for a 2022 mini grant. So if you're looking at any of these kinds of things, archival supply, storage shelving, climate control, uh, the software, the past perfect software we've been talking about, digitization equipment we've been talking about, uh, conservation supplies training. These are all things we've seen funded in the mini grant program and um, we encourage everyone to apply. Next slide, please. Things we do, uh, we've been in, we've really been engaging through webinars a lot lately, of course, with the pandemic and we're all, we were all stuck home and kind of still stuck sometimes. Um, we had to engage in new ways. So we did a lot of Zoom meetings, we did webinars, uh, we do, and we will continue to do these and we did these before the pandemic, but we offer free open webinars throughout the year. Recently, we've just a few months ago, we did a really amazing uh, program on the Hmong refugees, Hmong refugee experience in Wisconsin. Um, it tied in with one of the new press books, Paul Lohr's uh, Modern Jungles book. So he was there, a couple of other uh, Hmong uh, ladies, a uh, professor were, was there to discuss, you know, what that experience was like and how it's refugee, not immigrant. It was a really fascinating uh, discussion. And it's wonderful that we could we could have it statewide um, through the webinar. We also have done interpreting women's history at historic sites. That's been big. We also have had uh, the traveling exhibits with women's history, among other things. Uh, Markers, monuments, and meetings was an or excuse me and meaning was another uh, popular kind of three webinar series. Really looking at because uh, of course earlier in the year or the year before, I should say, there was the big monument kind of discussion. Well, what does this mean to America? It was a nation, nationwide conversation we were having about how do we feel about markers and monuments? What does this say about us as a people? What does it say about our past, our present, our future? Um, and it created a lot of questions and just, uh, among average Americans and average Wisconsinites. So we in turn decided to let's address that. Let's have this discussion. So uh, Janet and Kristen, and lots of other people brought in some great uh, speakers from around the nation to talk about the meaning behind these things and, and processing these things um, on this idea of monuments. And, and it, was a, it was a good discussion for everyone in terms of we learned a lot, but we also were able to process some maybe preconceived notions or, or plan out in our heads, like what does this mean for our local communities? Very useful. We also, of course, have strategies for fundraising success during COVID-19. That's always an issue. We did one on reopening museums and historic sites. And just FYI, past webinars are available via our website. Okay, next slide, please. And then we have our conference. So one of the ways we, we like to engage is the Local History and Historic Preservation Conference. And this is held in October every year. Um, in partnership with the uh, SHPO office, uh, State Historic Preservation Office, the local history outreach team plans the annual local history and historic preservation conference. And this is delightful. I've never actually been to one in person because I'm a newer employee. So last year it was online, this year it's gonna be online. And then finally in 2022, we're gonna be meeting in Rothschild, which is kind of my old stomping grounds. I used to live in Stevens Point for a few years. Um, so Rothschild, of course, is between Point and Wausau. That's a little town there. So we invite you to please join us online. This is, you know, last year's online was a bummer because we didn't get to see each other, but it was also a wonderful thing because we had a really good turnout and people who normally maybe couldn't attend for whatever reasons were able to attend. So that's the pandemic world. That's the online world, right? There's there's the goods and the bad. So the negative is, of course, we miss seeing everyone and engaging in that way, but at least we got to keep doing it. And it's going to be the same way this year. At least we're still providing information. We're still engaging online. Um, we just won't get to see each other on breaks in the hallway and things like that and, and have little side meetings. Uh, but that, those will be back in 2022. 
And in 2023, we'll be down in La Crosse and 24 will be in Appleton. Next slide, please. Ah, book club, my favorite thing in the world. So we started book club. I started book club last fall and it, there's a friendly face in there. I think you've got the same uh, background on today, Joe. Joe Hermelin is in our book club. <laughs> it really is an amazing book club. <laughs> we started it uh, last fall, again, in reaction to COVID. Uh, what are we going to do? Let's, let's engage. And it started as the Northern Wisconsin Book Club. Oh, I apologize. It started as the Northern Wisconsin Book Club, but we got friends from all over, especially on this. You can see, I, just looking at the faces, I see a few people from Northern Wisconsin, Carol, Aaron, Eric, uh, myself. Um, then we've got some of our friends from Central Wisconsin, like Janet, and then down South, we've got Ellen and Laura, and Joe's Northern too. Um, although I don't know, maybe you'd be considered yourself central, Joe. I guess it's we'll leave you to to create your own label. So when we had this great group, and we're all meeting virtually anyway, so let's just make it a statewide uh, engagement. So every month we meet, uh, we read a book, and sometimes it's a press book. Usually it's a press book, but not always. But it's a Wisconsin history book. Uh, we've done a book on birds and gardens and um, the Civil War, uh, black, black soldiers in the Civil War. Um, we've done uh, one of our non-press books we did was A Little History of My Forest Life, which was about Eliza Morrison's experience up here in northern Wisconsin, the Iron River, Bayfield, Washburn, or Madeline Island, Bad River area. And we come up with questions and, and we have a, a great discussion. This year, we've got our um, book club planned. So our first book is going to be about natural, the state parks in Wisconsin, looking at their natural environment. So like the geology of state parks. And that first meeting is September 16th. That is a press book and all press books, if you join the book club, you get a 20% discount on the titles we use. So it's free to join, it's free to attend, because um, you just, you just got to read the book and come, and sometimes there, our folks don't read the book. <laughs> oh, if you want to join the book club, please uh, contact me, liz.arbuckle at wisconsinhistory.org, and I will get you set up. Absolutely. And then I put you on our little mailing list or emailing list, and then I'll send out Thanks, Kristen. I'll send out, uh, I'll send you the list so you can start looking around. I know some of our book clubbers already have gotten, have gotten the list so they can start checking, oh, you know, St. Vinny's and rummage sales and stuff like that, trying to find a book uh, that might be on our list. So it's kind of a little, a little hunt, <laughs> I guess, to go ahead of time. And that on the left is my beautiful daughter, Vidi, who's uh, demonstrating reading of the book that was Blue Men and River Monsters that we read for, uh, I think, October last fall. So that was lovely. So next, uh, next slide, please. This is really exciting. I'm sure you've already heard about this, but we've got the new Wisconsin History Museum coming, the Bureau Board of Characters. Uh, approved a $120 million project to build a new Wisconsin History Museum at a new site one block away from the Capitol. It's being funded through a combination of private donations and state funds. And this is just history in the making. So stay tuned because look for ways to engage in sharing your history as we launch the next phase of statewide programs too. And as the new museum unfolds. So that's just going to be, that's just, like I said, that's just happening uh, in real time. And it's very exciting to see the developments and the movements forward. We're all excited. Next slide, please. So get in touch with us. Um, if there's any way we can help you, whether it's uh, about book club or a webinar you were interested in, and we're hoping to try to find that, you can contact me or Kristen or Janet or or anyone, we're, we're happy to help. Um, you can email us at field services at wisconsinhistory.org. You can request the local history e-newsletter e by email. Um, lots of good information in there. 
Uh, you can join the local history listserv, ask questions, seek advice, post events, and you can go to our website to learn more. Now on the bottom uh, of these pictures, we've got obviously a birch bark canoe that's at Bayfield Heritage Association Museum. And that's a canoe put together by, created, built maybe, by Marvin Defoe, a Red Cliff tribal member and uh, tribal histori historical preservation officer. So that's uh, for viewing there. In the middle, you can see our um, our CEO, Christian Overland, who's greeting uh, various members at a community event. And on the right, that's Bad River. So uh, that's where I live, actually. This was one of our projects. I'll take a minute since we've got a minute to, to share about that. Uh, the Historical Society teamed up with our local 4-H club which and the, on the reservation, which is called Resberries, and, and the Bad River Tribe. And there's a half mile path right there along the highway that the tribe put in, but it was just plain old boring asphalt. So Resberries thought, well, let's, let's, you know, decorate this. Let's give people something new to think about. So with the society, we partnered with them, the Resberries and the tribe. All three came together to create this and we created little animal prints. So you can see the Mikinak is the snapping turtle. Right. And you can see the kids painting. So this was last summer. So um, we did all sorts of animals that you'd find in northern Wisconsin. So bear, deer, wolf. And it was kind of a multi level project in that the kids learned how the animals walked and moved. So you didn't have like little tiny deer tracks that are just six inches apart. No, they had like real deer, like how far a deer would move or an average deer and little bunny tracks were as far as how a bunny would jump, not big giant three yards of, of uh, a big leap for a bunny. It was like an average bunny walking. So it was a multi-level educational experience, which of course is one of the things historical society loves to do and 4-H loves to do. Um, also was bilingual. So you can't see it in the picture, but on the other side of the tracks, it says snapping turtle. So it's designed to help people learn Ojibwe language uh, by seeing it repeatedly on their walks. It's designed to help them learn what a snapping turtle track looks like. If they see one out in the mud when they're out for a walk somewhere else, um, they'll be able to recognize it, right? So uh, we're about a little, little over halfway done with the this trail. And we also did a... Um, hopscotch, but it's all in Ojibwe. So that's another way to learn numbers is to create a hopscotch with, with the numbers. So um, that's a little bit about the kind of stuff we do. We're always looking for, for interesting ideas and we're always excited to share our interesting ideas. So, so please get in touch. We would love to talk more. I think that's it for our slides, right? Next questions or any questions I think is next slide. Okay. Hmm, that's great right about Winnicani. That sounds wonderful. Anything else I can help you guys with today or? Well, thank you, Liz. That was a great presentation. This is Michelle from Crandon. Thank you very much. It was, uh, we had some comments here in the, in uh, the Crandon room that um, lots of great opportunities for us to network together with the Northern uh, Field Services. So we will be in touch. Sounds great. Uh, so now I, are we going to jump right into the Clio session? Is that correct? Yep, sure is. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, right. you guys. Thank, Thank you, Liz. Okay, bye.